Coming up, outspoken Congressman Ron Paul, who is running for president. How does he feel about the president's dire forecasts if Congress fails to raise the debt ceiling? We'll ask him next. President Obama stated emphatically today that the American military mission in Libya does not fall under the jurisdiction of the 1973 War Powers Resolution. The administration's p position has angered not only many Republicans on Capitol Hill, but many Democrats as well. We're joined tonight by Congressman Ron Paul of Texas, who is also running for the GOP presidential nomination. Congressman Paul, thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, you think the president does not have the right to engage the U.S. in the NATO-led effort in Libya without Congress's approval. Today, in his press conference, the president made clear that he believes the law does allow him to make this commitment on his own. Listen to this for a moment, if you would. I'm not a Supreme Court justice, so I'm not, I'm not going to uh, 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 put, put my constitutional law professor hat on here. Do I think that... Uh, our actions in any way violate the War Powers Resolution? The answer is no. So I don't even have to get to the constitutional question. Simply, sir, what's your reaction? <laughs> That's a horrible statement. Um, no, he, he should get to the Constitution. He doesn't have to be a constitutional lawyer. You take an oath of office to obey the Constitution. If we don't know what it says, how can we take the oath? Uh, the Constitution is very clear. You don't go to war without a declaration. I agree there's some confusion with the War Powers Resolution because technically it legalized war rather than prevented war. So I don't particularly like that bill, but even if it's a law of the land, even that he has violated uh, because he can't go to war by talking to the United Nations and NATO and refusing to talk to the Congress. I, I think this is so sad and the kind of thing that I have been fighting with both parties for decades now. I think it's taken one step worse because he's been a little bit more aggressive in declaring that he is the unitary president, that he can do what he wants. He, he doesn't have to tell the Congress. So I find it rather sad that he has taken that position. Uh, we'll get back to the question of consulting Congress, but first I want to ask you about a point Senator John Kerry raised. As you know, he's the chair of the Foreign Relations Committee in the Senate, and he raised the point that if Congress wanted a say in this, they actually had a chance. Listen to this. You're saying the president violated the process here and didn't come to the Congress. He did come to the Congress. He sent us a letter requesting us to do the authorization, and we didn't do it. That's the simple fact here. He's saying that Congress dropped the ball at the very beginning. Do you acknowledge that Congress could have done something and didn't? Oh, oh they could have done a lot more a lot sooner. That, that is true. They shouldn't have waited for more than 90 days. They should have immediately let the president know that he was violating the War Powers Resolution and the Constitution. But uh, I don't know what he's talking about on the appropriations. Uh, he has no explicit appropriations uh, for, uh, for this war. Uh, so he, hasn't, he doesn't have the money and he doesn't have the authority. And we're slipping into another war. And nobody can even count the wars. Nobody knows whether this is number four or number five. With a country that's flat out broke and we allow our presidents to do this, this just means that, uh, you know, the constitutional process and the economic situation in this country is totally out of control. Uh, foreign relations. Well, today the president said, um, the, you raised the question of consultation. Today the president said that the criticism he has not sufficiently consulted with Congress is actually just partisan politics. He says he has consulted with Congress repeatedly, had people in repeatedly address this issue repeatedly. Sim are you using this issue simply to score political points? Uh, he hasn't called me, and he hasn't come <laughs> to the Congress, and, uh, you, you, you know, uh, the Congress is everybody. And uh, if you follow the laws, the law says, the Constitution says, if you go to war, you have to have a declaration. You can't uh, replace that with saying, well, we had a U.N. resolution, we went to NATO. You know, many, many years ago, after World War II, when NATO was set up, 
Mr. Republican Robert Taft said, don't get into NATO, because before you know it, we'll use NATO for having us slip into these wars, and his predictions were exactly right. The sovereignty of this nation depends on us and not the UN, and the Constitution is the law of the land, and we don't have to be uh, constitutional lawyers to understand that. We don't need lawyers to tell us what to do and not to do, because we shouldn't be in office if we don't understand what the Constitution says. It's plain and simple. So, but, but he's not the first. It's been going on for so long. Matter of fact, Truman was the first one to do it. He went in under the UN resolution. I'm sure if I'd have been in Congress back in, in uh, 1940, well, 1950, I'd have been as outraged as I am now. But that, that's a slippery slope. And uh, unfortunately, it's leading, it, it's a large participant in our bankruptcy. Right now, it's estimated that wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the new estimates will be over $4 trillion. It's so hard hard to estimate at a time when we can't even pay for medical care for people in this country. You know, the president also made a point about the message that this debate the, that's happening in the U.S. is sending to the broader world. Here's what he said. We should be sending out a unified message to this guy that he should step down and give his people a fair chance to live their lives without fear. And, and, and this suddenly becomes the, the cause celeb for some folks in Congress? Come on. He's, this guy, he's talking about Gaddafi, that the U.S. should be unified in saying Gaddafi should step down. So oh, yeah. Hey, he's a, he seemed to be implying so that Gaddafi's members of Congress... the only bad guy in the world? <laughs> well, I'm asking, do you agree that members of Congress who are calling for U.S. troops to li leave Libya are sort of se are sending mixed messages to Gaddafi, and is it important that U.S. politicians are unified on the issue? Well, no, it's not important. What, what is a free country supposed to do? What is a democracy supposed to do? What, is, what are the debates all about? This idea that you can't dissent from a president that we sincerely believe is uh, thwarting the Constitution, we're not supposed to say anything? I mean, that, that's just beyond imagination. So, but the whole idea, because he's a bad guy and we don't like him, and he might have done something if we hadn't gone in. Well, they said he might, Gaddafi might kill civilians. Well, how many civilians have been killed since we've been involved in bombing him? Hundreds, if maybe thousands of individuals have been killed over there, and Gaddafi is not killing his own people. But there are a lot of bad people in the world. Does he want to do that uh, in every dictatorship around the country? But we have, since the, since the Cold War ended, Ended, we've assumed this responsibility that we have to dictate to every single country which dictators should run their country. So when there's a good dictator, you know, we sort of give them a lot of money when they turn against us or we decide he's a bad dictator. I mean, it wasn't so many years ago that we were doing business with Gaddafi. Just a few years ago. The same, it's, it's just over and over. At one moment, we're their best friends as, you know, we were on the same side as Bin Laden was when, when the Soviets were in Afghanistan. Then he became our arch enemy. Saddam Hussein was our best friend in the 80s. We helped him and we even helped, uh, helped them get a nuclear reactor at one time. And so it's this flip-flopping around and we forget about the purpose Switching. of the Congress and the president. It's supposed to protect the sovereignty and the safety of this country, not to take care of the whole world and police and decide which dictator is going to run every country. Switching gears, sir, if we could for a moment. You're opposed, let's talk about the economy here. You're opposed to cutting a deal to raise the debt ceiling. You've argued that we should just let that deadline come and go and that we'll survive without a financial crisis. But in a press conference today, the president disagreed. Well, I want to address... Uh, what I've been hearing uh, from some quarters, which is, well, maybe uh, this debt limit thing is not really that serious. We can just pay interest on the debt. For the U.S. government to start picking and choosing like that is not going to inspire a lot of confidence. Moreover, which bills are we going to decide to pay? Are we really going to start paying interest to Chinese who hold treasuries? And we're not going to pay folks uh, their Social Security checks? So, sir, which bills would you pay, or do you dispute the whole proposition? Well, well, for the president to imply that we don't think it's serious, matter of fact, we think it's very, very serious. We just think that continuing the process is worse 
than facing up to the facts that we're out of money and we're flat out broke. So don't, don't, he should never challenge and tell us that we're not seriously worried about this. But the whole thing is fear tactics is the tool of big government. Just think of how we go to war, this whole thing about Saddam Hussein, how he was ready to unleash, unleash nuclear weapons on us. So we go to war and none of that was true. And then also when the crisis hit in 2008, oh, if we don't bail out all these big banks and corporations, the Fed doesn't double and triple the money, so it'll be the end of the financial world and the end of Western civilization. And, and bottom that line, was how do you people think said, okay, we, we better go and do it. Bottom so line, now, do you once think again, he's using the fear tactic. Bottom line, if we do not raise the debt ceiling, you think the U.S. will not suffer a financial crisis? Well, we're, we're in the middle of a financial crisis, and it's going to get worse no matter what we do, and it's going to get much worse if we don't quit spending and printing money because we're defaulting. They say, okay. we can't do this or we'll default on our promises. We've done this many times. We default Sir. every single day when prices go up because that's a depreciation of the money, so we're in the middle of default. Thank you so much. I wish we could continue. We're out of time. Thanks for being with us, okay. Congressman Ron Paul.